working anymore. Hello everyone, 
And we're back a uh, day late today because uh, basically I was had plans to go see fireworks yesterday, but we got lots of rain, so I but I planned around that. Uh, so kind of threw off my day, so decided to do run today instead. Uh, got some time this weekend setting up a new microphone, so things probably sound a little different. Hopefully better. Did a little bit of testing with that, but we're back. Back in the swamp in Blight Town. Uh, actually, going to take the shortcut back up, um, and we are going to go back to the Undead Asylum. You can get back, and there's a ring. It'll make it a lot easier to run around here. Oh, no, I did get him. Felt like it didn't. Yeah, pretty much yesterday I went uh, over to my friend's house and we actually played through uh, Oxenfree and recorded that for the other channel we're trying to work on. He's got going called uh, Dan Hole and Friends where we've actually got a couple weeks worth of videos up there. Played through Mega Man X. Well, he played through Mega Man X. Daniel, he's out there somewhere probably in this chat. Um, then we played some Castlevania and Dracula X and been doing through some Super Nintendo games. He's got a basically a bunch of them available to play. And then, like I said, I play Oxenfree, which is a really fun story game. About, only about five hours long, but it's good. I've been meaning to go back and play it again for a while. There's my ladder. And it was fun. Like I say, I got there, I was in, got a haircut, and went over there about the time I normally stream, so. I did play a little bit offline. Uh, I went to the uh, Great Hollow and got a bunch of Twinkling Titanite like I do for my Black Knight Halberd in the other run. Uh, basically for a weapon I want to use later. And there'll be parts of the game where it's handy to have a divine weapon so that the skeletons and stuff don't come back to life. And there's one you can pick up for free without having to make it a divine weapon. And it upgrades with Twinkling Titanite. So I went ahead and stocked up on that. Tried gathering some other stuff, but I didn't really have the patience for it, so I stopped. Mostly because it's it is hard to trudge around the swamp. Anything with a lot of water. Uh it slows you down a lot. We'll go to an area real quick. Um that's got an item you can use to make that a little faster. That's a bizarre way of getting there. This area, of course, the Valley of the Drakes is very recognizable to anyone watching you do the fast runs through. So I always use the master key to come the back way to get here and just skip Blight Town, which you did last time entirely. And while this isn't exactly a platforming game, this to get back to the Undead Asylum requires a little bit of platforming, so we'll see how well it goes. Make a tricky little jump. Oh, and there's more people.
Hmm? Hmm? What have we here? You look awfully raggedy. Times are grim. The least you can do is look sharp. Don't you dare meet my lady like that. You might scare her off for good. Well, I thought he talked about that with, uh... When you're hollow, but I'm not that, so. You again. What be I don't suppose we can help, though. We accompany my lady on her righteous mission. It is quite a chore, but I'm stuck with her. And Nico, too. I can't very well abandon them now. Oh, you again. I don't suppose we are... It is... I can't... Oh, hello. My guests have finally arrived. I will be departing with them shortly. So, I'm afraid I will be saying goodbye soon. It was a pleasure. Oh, Mir Come again. You are undead as well? Then we've no time to fraternize. I have my mission and you no doubt have yours. We must not let this curse overcome us. Did I not explain the urgency of our tasks? Or are you so uncouth as to lack such judgment? By the looks of you, I should think not. Did I not hold by the Okay, I get it. Oop, not going up. Gotta jump down here. Actually no, I did need to go up. I did need to use the elevator. It's been a while. Yeah, that's one thing about the Souls uh series and Elevators is a lot of times I hide secret stuff uh, Like kind of all along the elevator shaft, but usually if you uh, Look around there'll be like a way to jump out or something somewhere along there Hmm mysterious noises Oh, yes, talk to this guy we saved oh, I see you made it out. Yeah I made it out safely too. I have my pyromancy of the Great Swamp, so I can usually manage with a bit of care. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, I can share my spells with you. I think you have a knack for it. All you need are the materials. I'll be pleased to help you. Ah, and unless you find the magics unsavory. Yeah, wonderful. I'm sure that you know, they'll be of some use, some assistance. Here, first take this. A flame from the Great Swamp. Now, you're a fully-fledged pyromancer. Why, let's get started right now. Sure. These are really good, if, especially if you want to, like, say, farm those slime things from the, from the depths. The uh, pyromancies do a lot of damage to him. Makes it a lot faster. I say, and you can modify this. The great thing about pyromancy in the first Dark Souls is it has no stat requirement for it, or like it doesn't scale with anything. So you just all you have to do is spend souls, upgrade your flame, and everything gets more powerful. So any build can use it. So a lot of people like, well, see any anyone who plays the game through on Soul Level One, which people do. Uh, you start as a Pyromancer because it's the only class that starts at that level. And you start with a Pyromancer Flame. Goodbye then. Come. I need to check my stats. If I can even equip spells yet. Uh, yeah, I can equip one. Oh, what? So what the heck, let's upgrade it again, and we'll go ahead and start using it. Wait, friend. Where, where are you off to? Things do, Laurentius. Tunes the magic. Basically, he has a little minimum 10 attunement to get uh, one slot for spells, and then more powerful spells take... You can see underneath where it says Pyromancy, it's got how many slots it takes. 
I had the power of Zinj, which is probably something I will use. Gives you a damage buff, which I actually never used it before. You know what? I'm going to try it out. We have a boss coming up. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, Dark Souls Two, like. Well, you know how much uh, people like the first Dark Souls, where it's like interconnect interconnected and like very consistent world. Uh, it's Dark Souls Two has like an elevator. They feel like people feel like the area it goes to like doesn't match like everything. So yeah, it was a big deal to a lot of people. It's it's like around the area that's kind of like that that game's blight town and has something like that i think it's like either the elevator you take there or you take from there to like the old iron kingdom or something like that yeah i remember that too it's been a while i haven't played dark souls 2 in a while it's they like did it a lot differently so it, it makes it kind of hard to go back to yeah i get to pretend like i'm an egg and if you sit here long enough nothing happens The main thing about going back to Dark Souls 2 is like your stamina drains so fast compared to most games. Like, and I didn't, I don't think, I think I, the problem was I tried going back to play it after I was playing Bloodborne. And Bloodborne is like really forgiving on how fast your stamina goes down. Like, it, it went, so you, <laughs> when you compare it, it just seems like it goes down insanely fast. And that's just like really hard to get used to. It's like, like I run everywhere, like when you know when you're not like in the middle of something. And like they did some like motion capture stuff, I think, with some of like the animations. So it's a lot different. I liked it a lot though. And a lot of people, I think, make some really good personal connections to it because it's uh, focused a lot on like the hollowing and uh, a lot of people's like tragic personal stories. And I you know I've heard of some people who really connect to it, like on a like a you know a depression level and that kind of thing. But whereas this one's kind of more of like a big, completely connected world, Dark Souls Two had more of like a, a hub kind of with like a bunch of like spokes going out from it kind of kind of style that some people don't like as much now here says so some guy shooting arrows at us there's a black knight. I just can't get my repose with that. Ow. Oh, crap. Thought I had enough time. Nope.
Ouch. Yeah, luckily it's like right by a bonfire, but who is it? A weird little area to fight one of those guys in because you kind of like to have some maneuverability. Yeah, I'm not as familiar with Demon Souls, but I know it's kind of more like designed to kind of you kind of go through one area and you get to a point where it gets tricky. It's like you just kind of switch to another one. Someday I'll play that. If I can ever get a PlayStation 5. There we go. Come on. right in the dick. It's not fun. Red Titan Chunk. You can get, like, say, I always fight the other one for the Black Knight Halberd, but you can get, like, a Black Knight Sword. I remember how our old friend talked about not wanting to hurt us after he was gone. Well, now he's fully hollowed. Good fighter though, because every time you got your shield up, he tries to kick it. Yeah, it's really good against some magic damage. That can be handy in some areas. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot that resets. Go find the key. Oh crap, I think it's but I think that key is back at Firelink Shrine, if I remember right. There's another place I need to go to. back to our old cell real quick and we get another item to open another optional area.
Now let's remember how like when we start, you can see this guy here. It's actually a boss in this area, because once you come, you know, like say the silent demon slams down and like weakens the floor. When you come back. It actually opens a whole nother area. guys are very intimidating we can get the time tax uh, timing of their attacks down they're not too bad to parry if you got a lot of room look like the ones you fight in an orlando uh it's actually pretty easy to strafe behind them kill your doll once was abomin an abomination who had no place in this world she Touched this doll tightly and eventually was drawn into a cold and lonely painted world. It's actually like a very popular area in this game. Completely optional. And if you go to the area, the boss is optional too. Very interesting. Oh, hello. back real quick i gotta get a key item we can come back and get the rusted iron ring and i'll go back to blight down to blight town the swamp there it is I can't remember exactly what level that boss is geared for, but we'll give it a shot. I haven't fought it for a while, and I can't remember if it's exactly like the Demon Fire Sage. It's very similar. It's like a beefed up version of the Asylum Demon. I 
don't think I have an orange soapstone right up with that message because that's a good spot to put that. I think Dark Souls 2 uses this uh, as a as an uh, as one of the paths to get to one of your air one of the areas. It has a couple different ways to it. I think they use the, the crow thing again. quality weapon there. Ooh. Stuff all backwards there. Here we go. Find it easier to gain footing on poor ground such as swamps. So let's go ahead. And... Yeah, we'll keep this one on for the moment. Bonfire. Oh. How about you? Walk forward. Let's try to get out of here. And oh no, the floor. Another one of those stupid boss entrances where you actually like take damage from the fall, which sucks. Let's try to fight out a little bit first before I throw on any spells to take my health because I gotta make sure I can survive long enough to get the fight started. Oh yeah, I do very little damage. I'll try to get my power thin spell on and see. Do that right now. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Do a little extra damage, but oh boy. I just dual wield this. Eh. 
Yeah, that's not so bad. Keep doing that, I'll whittle you down in no time. Ah, crap. That's not the right way. Ooh, just get out of it. Mostly just keeps doing the same attacks. It won't be so bad. Just take a little time. It's on the lower amount of damage I'm doing here. Trying to check real quick, see if I still have any. Any gold pine resin at all, definitely help. Ooh, yeah, I didn't think I was gonna get away fast enough. Yeah, so I think these explosions are kind of based on like where you're at. So if you keep moving, you kind of tend to get out of the way, but. I always tend to want, I want to roll, because that's kind of like the best, like, kind of habit. For a lot of stuff, but it doesn't work so well on those big explosion attacks. Yeah, anytime you fight one of these guys, that butt snob is like the best one to get. It's easy just to get a lot of time to get out of the way, and as long as you don't run back too fast, you can get some hits in. Ah, shit. Ah! Ouchies. Well, got what I wanted. It was worth giving that a shot, but it takes some time, so we'll come back to that.
since we're heading back, let's go ahead and put on the rest of that ring. Ouch. Alright, it doesn't help us with the poison, but see now we can run on a lot faster. Ooh, sorry. Get used to this thing being right here. mosquitoes because they are hard to hit to watch this like they I don't probably get it just because I'm trying but I mean, maybe it's just a weapon I feel like most of the time when you feel like you should hit them a lot of times I don't plus they just respawn they're really just kind of a minor annoyance but down here they're not too bad to get away from but when you're going up the ladders and stuff it can be really annoying or you're trying to like you know like you like to try to creep your way along and be safe it can be hard with them chasing after you. Poison mist. Oh, and there's the pyromancy set. Yeah, there's not, I mean, a whole lot out here. There's a lot of items you can get. And like I said, it leads just some other optional areas, like the Great Hollow and the and Ash Lake beyond that. And like the Ash Lake is, you know, or the Hollow is a really good place for 
you know, you can get some Twinkling Titan in there and some other items, so it's worth a look. Especially once you get into, like, one of those specialty items and use that to upgrade. I say, fighting these is a lot easier if you've got the ring. Green Titanite Shard. It's like you can see poison like you can kind of withstand poison quite a bit like it goes really slow and the nice thing is like you don't have to worry about it getting if you keep like if you keep using items to get rid of it you know you'll just keep getting poison repoisoned all the time oh dang. Be harder than i expect that's the root up there that goes to the great hollow there's a bonfire there so a lot of people if you want to farm these guys for like large titanite shards or the green shards like you can Kind of use that as a quick, easy way to get back and forth. There's a lot of them around. Can't I'll lock on you. Large shard there. We'll need to go up to plus 10. Let's get to plus 10 and get to the Smith and Arrowando. I can make it lightning, which I'm probably going to do. Well, I won't make it lightning before I fight one scene and smoke because that they are very much resistant to that. Yeah, but lightning is very popular for weapons in this game because it's not a lot of stuff, a ton of stuff is resistant to it. So in general, it's pretty handy. The spear you can get is like just a lightning. I'm pretty sure Andre sells a sword that's similar to this. I'll probably buy one of those and just have kind of a backup. I'll have try to upgrade that and have like a regular weapon and an elemental one. In case we run across anything the elemental's damage is not good for. See, because once your poison goes away, it comes back really quick for just standing in any of this. And there are definitely there are rings you can get uh, that will give you kind of resistance to all the different types of elements like lightning or fire or poison. There's one that reduces like sad effects like curse and bleed. A lot of them you have to buy and they're expensive. And armors and shields will help you a lot with that. Weapon that I use for a whole playthrough, which if you ever want an easy mode weapon, this is one of them. A great club. It's upgraded it completely and it just destroyed everything. Oh shit. You gotta go through these guys for rocks. Not there, anger. We'll just make our way back to the bonfire. We'll rest, and then we'll 
Way to Quaylog. Normally we would have killed... Let's say I think the game clock was about five and a half hours when I started. But normally we would have killed her probably three times by now. We were doing a run, fast run through. And I'm not going to use some humanity because the NPC we fought, Manager Mildred, we can actually summon her for this boss fight. Or maybe, that looks like there's some people playing, maybe we'll, maybe we'll see if we can get an actual human player. But we'll kindle the bonfire too, just so we have some extra healing. After we reverse. Following. A note about summoning and help. It does make the boss's HP go higher. Which can be a... Uh, end up making the bot fight harder for you if you know because I know it's happened to me plenty of times you go try to help someone you die really fast and they're kind of stuck with it because yeah there's some people here got a big sword pyromancer probably would be super helpful against you know the, the chaos you know, elemental boss. Look at this guy. No, that's not what I wanted. Can't think of what that weapon is. And all the weird stuff people do <laughs> when you jump into a game. <laughs> Sass Daniel, we'd spend like tons of time with Bloodborne just doing the make contact gesture. <laughs> it just keeps going. Like forever and just switch the arms. <laughs> oh, item. Large shards, please. I'll take it. Ow. <laughs> yeah, usually it wasn't going my normal path. Usually I just, yeah, come under here and you're far enough away that you don't aggro them too, or don't aggro them fast enough. But yeah, that time they got me. Right, get rid of our poison, heal up. Like, say, NPC summon, okay, take her too. Oh. 
Oh, there she goes. Dang, see? You always gotta watch out for that attack, very specifically. Nothing else, though. If someone can just kind of run some interference and just be a nice distraction, it can help out so much. I also would highly recommend, especially like I say, it's hard sometimes within a game like this, like this older, you never know how many people are playing. Remaster is probably not as bad, but like if you're playing an older or a, like an older Souls game that's not like the newer one. And right now, there's not a lot, you know, none of the Dark Souls games have been around for, they've been around for a while. Um, it might be a little harder to find matchmaking, and certain bosses, you know, you tend maybe not to find as much, but... Uh, but on most of these games, you, you just kind of go to the boss door, usually... Oh, let's be careful. You can just kind of put your summon sign down, and it's a good way to get some practice uh, without much cost to yourself. Thank you, Mildred. Yeah, I think it's also a little weird sometimes when you're fighting uh, a boss with another person because sometimes, like, you'll think, "Oh, yeah, they're they're gonna look at them." Then all of a sudden it changes and they're looking at you and you get hit, so it can be a little unpredictable at times. But in general, it does make things a lot easier. Once again, I don't forget to ring the bell. Now we have our next wave way ahead. And so does Sigmire. Been waiting so long. Oh, has he waited? Hmm. 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 Closed. But not anymore. Oh, I didn't even use power within on that fight. That's all right. I was letting everyone kind of do the work for me. <laughs> and here. Yeah. Oh dear. What have we here? Are you a new servant? Yes. But you have no eggs. Ah, no matter. 
Go along and have audience with our fair lady. I pray that you will mind your manners. Yeah, she's actually a keeper of a bonfire as well. Yeah, there's nothing down there. Are you prepared to dedicate Not yet, anyway. You can. I will make available what if you need something. Join the Covenant, and he's given enough humanity, like 30, I think, to unlock the back way into Lost Isola, which is needed for the uh, Solar Quest line. Yeah, but they need a humanity because she is, like, like deathly ill, and it's the only thing keeping her alive, which is actually why Quaylog is out there. When you get there, try to you know, fight, you know, pretty much anything that comes through, trying to any humans get the humanity and use to keep her sister healthy. But that's all gone now because of us. Those are for a runoff. She should use these. Yeah, the NPC summons can be pretty good in this game. Sometimes they can be, you know, a little more ineffectual. Manator Mildred is not bad. Surprised it provides a good distraction, but she, you know, it's not the AI is not smart enough to know like, oh, I just, you know, I just need to go in there and fight. I don't really, you know, just really don't worry about staying out of like the lava and stuff. So sometimes if it's just you, you know, that's the only thing, you know, you only summon the NPC to help you. A lot of times she'll die before the end, but. She's not a bad, he doesn't do bad damage, she's just, she's just not smart enough to not take all the extra damage from all the lava on the floor. The NPC summon in Sen's Fortress, however, is very good and pretty much trivialized that fight. Not that the fight's too bad if you kind of know how it works. That's a lot of fun about these games, especially this one. It's like once you learn kind of more about the areas and like kind of the various paths you can take through, you can get yourself some pretty good gear early. Just kind of kind of know the way. Which is nice, you know, if you want to <laughs> find a fun way to play, but also it can be a pain in the butt because a lot of times you'll get to the, you'll be trying to get to the gargoyles and you'll come across people who are invading, you know, 
to, to invade like lower level people is like you know it's it's level gated but like you know if you go equip yourself with really like high level stuff you're gonna fight people with a lot mostly their basic equipment and they're just gotten to the point of getting any kind of upgrade like there's just kind of no they have basically no chance of surviving if you really want to troll people that's a lot of one way a lot of people do it And really, it's nothing more frustrating when you're like you're new to a game like this. You just you just want to play to like get through it, and, and people are just like you know. You want to like go through it as you know you can avoid it by not having you know not being human, but at the same time, if you want to go, you really want help with a boss you're having trouble with. You want to summon someone in. A lot of times they're at the fog gate for the boss, and you, you, know, you can't get there because people are. Taking you out. Could be a real problem. That's why it's such a strategy just to kind of run past, you know, once you kind of know an area, you just kind of try to run past a lot of the regular enemies so that you can you know, save all the resources you can and get to the boss. You want to kind of want to make it as fast as possible because it's nothing kind of worse than struggling to get all the way to something that you don't really know how to fight yet and you can't really learn it. Because getting there takes so much effort. Whoops. Almost died. Oh, what's this? She's gone. There's an item. It's her set. So yeah, I couldn't remember exactly what this is, plus this item, the Black Eye Orb. Yeah. Oh, she's there. She's just dead. So... Let's see, one way to learn all that stuff in this game is look at that. Invite, invade world of a murderer of Firekeeper. So... Yeah, to defeat the perpetrator and reclaim the soul of the Firekeeper. The Black Eye keeps constant watch on the City of the Gods in Orlando. Which, you know, is another clue. So, pretty much. So she's gone, which means this bonfire is no, no longer not accessible to us. Because these, each of these, like, not every bonfire has a, a fire keeper, but the ones that do, like, are special ones. Like, you know, they have, they're already kindled. They have ten, you get ten S's from them instead of five. But, like, without the Firekeeper, they don't work. Did you ring the second bell? That is incredible, I must say. But now we have a new problem. It's noisy. It snores. And its breath is lethal. This is no laughing matter, I tell you. Damn. That stench. And I was really beginning to like it here. Oh. <sighs> Maybe it's time I do something about it. Ominous. And that's just Petrus again. Uh, oh, you again? Me? Uh, I've become separated from my lady. I've scoured near and far, but no sight of her. Where could she have gone? My lady. To think I swore to protect you with my life. Your Highness, where have you gone? I am entirely to blame for this. Oh, woe is me. I am unworthy, deathly so. Oh, I, sometimes I. Hmm, seems you already does. 
Oh, well, I'm pleased, as always. Goodbye, then. Come back if you... <laughs> An instinct. I was going to go back and... He's the bonfire. Oh, yeah, there's something else we can go look at. Figure out what that smell is all about. Oh, this is a weird looking dude. Ah, oh, don't fall in. Hello. I almost fell in. <laughs> Was it you who rang the bell of awakening? I am the primordial serpent, King Seeker Frant, close friend of the great <laughs> Lord Gwyn, chosen undead, who has rung the bell of awakening. I wish to elucidate your fate. Do you seek such enlightenment? Very well. Then I am pleased to share. Chosen undead, your fate is to succeed the great Lord Gwyn, so that you may link the fire, cast away the dark, and undo the curse of the undead. To this end, you must visit Anor Londo and acquire the Lord Vessel. <laughs> well, I don't remember if I jumped down here, if he gets pissed off about it or not. Maybe it's because he gets hit when I fall into him. I don't know. <laughs> well, if he does, there's another, uh, yeah, of course. I never had that happen before. Fell on that little ledge. The only other way I would use been use a homer bone and I would just I mean, and I would have just ended up back in the same place. So I was like, well I'll try chopping down, but like yeah, until you get the lower vessel, we didn't take you down there. Yeah, I'd always recommend uh, anytime anything major happens in the game, just kind of check back with NPCs. Since a lot of times, you know, they'll either move or their dialogue will change.
And we'll make our way back to Andre. Do some upgrading. Oh, I'll go back get back and get our souls. Make sure Ram Terror isn't pissed off at us. Oh, that's so mean. There we go. I am pleased. Oh, okay. Is it something bad. urgent? But yeah, you can actually feed um shards and, and, and items and stuff. Like if you want to clear out your inventory, you can actually get rid of stuff and you'll get a small amount of souls if you know if you're picking up everything, you can always just get rid of stuff you don't need and it, it's something. Those who seek the realm of lords must brave Sen's fortress, a deadly house of traps. Many have gone before you. But none have returned. Fate has chosen you. But proceed with caution. Those who many fate. Farewell. could smith some mighty weapons with one of those. Why not lend it to me? Yeah, that's the last time we got the large ember. You won't be disappointed. Gonna let us get up to plus ten. To get started. I like say, yeah, I will normally reinforce your weapon to move it up a level, but like once you get to like the threshold, like plus five, you have to ascend it using modify equipment. Go to plus six. Then you can back out and go back to reinforce. And go all the way up to plus eight. And let's look at his weapons. Yourself, night. Okay, we'll get the bastards, but we're just kind of going to be our alternate. Also, into our claymore, we'll send, we'll make our uh, claymore do lightning damage. We'll try to, man, you know what? If I got anything, I'd just go ahead and bump this up. So it's not too basic. Neither. 
And we'll head to Sinus Fortress. Explore that a little bit more than we usually do. We'll see if we can't use one of the Arc Sins Fortress's traps against these first two guys here. Well, I wanted to just hit one of them, but that'll work. A little bit of damage off both. Yeah, I suppose a lot of these pressure <laughs> pressure plate traps and there's just a little hole in the stairs right there that shoots a couple arrows. Get them in front of it, it can do some damage to them. Otherwise, you tend to just kind of run straight into it. This is also a good place. If you get knocked down here, the rusted iron ring helps you run down and down there too. There's some items and more of those titanite demons. Which is a good place to farm it, but otherwise I don't tend to go there. But sometimes you don't have a choice if you get knocked down by some of these. It's kind of a low drop chance, but you can actually get their sword, which I actually like quite a bit. Come look at this stupid jerk who is shooting at us. Another pressure plate. Be careful of. The game already starting to tell us that you now it's time for those you know, those next upgrade tier. So you start getting a lot <laughs> more stuff. I love that. Sometimes the game tells you about traps in a really fun way. Like smashing one of the enemies with it. Poor guys get hurt right in the dick. Yeah, and it's funny, you see these little paths that like the Kind of see like you know, the paths the stones are rolling down. This poor guy just happens to be sleeping on one of them. You can actually like later you can move the thing, move the mechanism. out over the side here.
Eh, I didn't get the item, but... Her friend! Stuck again, of course. News, I tell you. <laughs> what do you say, Sigmar? Hmm. Hmm. Ah, so you see my sight. Yes, indeed. I've run up against a wall, or a ball, to be precise. I'm afraid I'm a bit too tough to be up running those things. So here I sit in quite a pickle, but who knows? Perhaps we'll have another development. <laughs> Second there, that he's going to go back to staring at the wall. Dang it. Weapon. I think it's supposed to like do damage like around shields. I don't know how effective it really is. <laughs> well, it's like having two weapons. Steel protection is always good, increases your physical defense. You know, rings. You know what? Might as well use it. I can set it off. He's there. Probably not with him standing on it, apparently. That's yeah, alright.
Oh, look at that. Man, Serpent Greatsword. Oh, I forgot that one comes from behind. Yeah, this is a normally where I run up to the side and go up, and you can just turn the thing off. Although the timing is is weird, so like kind of need to do the thing where I quit out of the game and reload to reset the, where the boulders are. If you actually go down, there's more area to the level. And so there's this hole here, and you let them fall in long enough. I'll actually fill it up. Hoping you get an item. But if you turn that before you come down here, there's I'm pretty sure there's a ladder that you can go down. I think that's this area. You come down here, and you get to the first big old trick. <laughs> this so these games like to play on you. So if you look, if you're looking at these treasure chests, you see this chain is flying forward. Most of them around back in a little circle that's actually telling you something because uh, you don't know what to look for good strategy in this game is just attack pretty much every chest you see because it could be one of these and you wants to die Kill them, you can still get whatever item they had. Lightning spear. Very popular weapon. And there's some wonderful environmental storytelling on this elevator here. Just kind of goes automatically. <clears throat> it goes up and then it goes up some more. And there's a lot of blood on it. definitely want to jump off because it'll keep going up and I don't know if I can see from here or not probably not there are spikes up there <laughs> you just die if you stay on it too long now silly me I forgot to go back and check out the the boulders filled up I think No, it's a different area. I guess I'll fill up the boulders. Oh yeah, there's still a ladder there. It's just like you go down it, but it doesn't open up the area. Of this gold servant ring. Now two items like this, gold and the silver. This one's really handy. Boost your item discovery. So if you look at our stats, it would bump it from 100 to 300. So if you ever do any farming, that's a great item to have. Oh sh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't wait. That was not smart. Yeah, I don't remember what's down here, but I think there's something you can get to if you don't fill it up. Once you can always reset everything and do it later.
But yeah, saying this goes back down to uh, pretty sure if I remember right that yeah that sleeping uh the guy down there. You run up. That's where the boulders are coming from. So if we turn it. Now they launch down there. If you keep looking out. <laughs> you got woken up. We'll keep at it until he's dead, just for fun. Take the easy way to kill him. And here's where we can't frisk him up. That's the way it was going, and here it just goes to the outside. So just to make sure we're safe while we explore. We'll turn this a couple times. And, since, you know, Sigmire couldn't outrun these. This will let him progress forward in his quest line. That's where we came out. And they actually forgot where that was. Yeah, there's a little platform with an item and snake guy. Just come up here. In there, and yeah, It's a little tricky in tight quarters. Like they attack pretty fast, they do a lot of stamina damage. A large shard, so it's good.
if you have any kind of range stuff, you can kind of lock onto him, wait till he attacks, and go and do some damage. I might actually try to see. I don't know if I have enough, but I do have some daggers. Probably not enough of those. Oh, but <laughs> you can knock him off. And that's just as good. This is a very... After you get this far, it's a very scary platforming part. Because it's hard to run through all, through all of them. But if someone's... If a nice person's put one of these down, you got a safe spot in the middle. But it's really hard to get through. All on one, so you kind of have to stop in the middle there. Like I said, if you have the orange soapstone, you can rate messages. And I always like to rate those positively. But I also don't always kill that guy, so sometimes you want to... There's that hole from that elevator. But I always like to reward people for doing nice things like that. That's another little trick there. It's like, you know, you get up here and it's like you stay in an area too long, a guy will like throw these big fire bombs at you and it's a hard to find bonfire if you don't know where you're going. Like seriously, after all that crap I have to deal with this. But he kind of, as long as you keep moving from area to area, he, you know, it takes a while for them to get there. You could jump across here and there's actually a merchant as well. I'm going to do a little exploring. There's Balder Knights as well. nice thing about having a long weapon. Things jump back away from you. Still get them. Feels good. Fog wall head. No. <laughs> yeah, Dark Souls 2 has a lot of like false walls and like illusory walls and stuff. A lot of them you don't have to just attack, you can just hit a button. It activates them. I said there's definitely a part I missed down there because I think that's probably where that ladder went, maybe. Because you can open up that that little cage and get in it and take it. It's like an elevator that goes down. There's actually another NPC you can get. It's really important if you're going to be a caster. That earlier in uh, the lower undead where you got the residence key, you can unlock a guy who's like his student. I didn't because I wasn't planning on. Here's the next boss over to this room. We can get a, a summon. And up here is the guy who's throwing all the firebombs at us, which kind of like uh, in the depths. If you don't take him out, he'll actually keep <laughs> I got you close. Now he's all tired. Yeah, 
Yeah, you want this guy to rage out like he's doing right now. And he gets tired and you get a chance to do a lot of attacks. He's being nice today and doing it. Chunk. We're not even to using those yet, but we've got a lot of large shards. I bet we're probably getting close. Throw what at eight? We need like another five, I think. Yeah, we got seven. Yeah. Although, like I said, the chunks I won't use on the claymore because, well, no, I think you still use the chunks for the lightning. Yeah, with that guy dead, he's actually safe to move around. Nothing else gets thrown down at you. See how my platforming is here. Oh, we made it. Oh, what? What? Who, who are you? Ah, another undead, eh? I took on Sam's fortress alone, but I'm no different from those vile creatures. I was driven by conceit. Ah, you think you're different? That you can handle it? Yes, I, I remember that feeling. For I was the same. So, let me help you out with your soul searching. There's nothing more to say. I'm finished. We're both on the brink, you see. End of story. You bloody fool. He's another guy who's given up, but he's actually a little more useful. But yeah, he sells uh, shards as well. They're expensive. You can get them here. Yeah, so the green shards are magic, divine, or fire. Sells the titanite shards, but Andre is actually a lot cheaper. You can get some big old weapons too. Great sword and the great axe, which we already found in the depths, but... Great sword is if you want a big, massive ultra great sword. And you don't, you're not already using this white hander, which is available pretty early on. You can get that there. Got some Katarina armor. And this steel armor. Baldur set. And they say a spell and thunder stone point rings for lightning and magic defense. Like I said, they're expensive 15,000 each. Nothing at all. Fine then. Nope. I've seen like a naked baby be HK. As long as we can make the jump one more time, we can do it without everything being alive again. Oh no, I guess everything is alive again down there. Back in the fortress, because he rested at this bump. So, we'll go back up, unlock the cage.
What do you think? If you had an elevator like this, would you take it? Oh, I forgot. This goes right back to the... That's what I was thinking of. This goes back to the beginning of the level. Or close to it, anyway. Yikes. Ouch. <laughs> I guess if you find this nice little shortcut, if you didn't get to the bonfire yet. But I did, so we're here. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, it's like, all you have to do is get in this little tiny cage. It's just big enough for you. Like, yeah, no. Yeah, it's a whole other aspect of the terror. Plus, it's the idea of like, okay, I don't you know, is this really secure? Was I smart enough to get in this? Is it just gonna like break and fall? Ooh, more shards. I was like, hmm, another chance to get a Baldur's side sword. It's not what I'm going for with this character, but it's a very rare drop. And I know people will spend a lot of time looking for it. Cool weapon. How do you get down there? There's a place to jump. Hmm. 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 It's all right. I think it's like a. A ranged weapon of some sort. A crossbow. Oh, I suppose we should go check this area out too. Another one of these big old knights. timing. I wish that that has to...
Come on. Your shield. Oh, good. <laughs> Kinda killed him, he was gonna hurt me pretty bad with that one. There's actually a unique rapier up here, too. For a second there, as he leaned over, it looked like his little shield was a hat. Like you say, from now on, you always want to look at these chains, see if they look like that. They're regular. If you're never not sure, quick attack will tell you. They're safe or not. off there. Just cut that corner and just perfect. Alright, eh, there's some people here too. As a caster. Iron Tarkus. Makes this fight so easy. It's pretty easy anyway. got me. Yeah, look at that. How much damage he does. It's crazy. I'm 
and you get all up in business. Holy. Yeah, if you keep at his legs and do a bunch of damage, yeah, he gets knocked down. Cool. Yeah, it's the only problem. Mostly when you're helping out, you can't do any damage when they get the grab attacks going. Oh. It hurt, but you get staggered like whenever they kind of step on you like that. But yeah, it's ridiculous how easy he makes that fight. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, I've seen people doing like I saw a, a video of two people who were like I can't remember if they were invading or they might have been invading, they may have just been like summoning the other one in and like just sitting there and waiting for people to try to invade their world. And they would just kind of sit there with these big shields and just kind of block the path like it's not too far from Firelink when you're like get to that next bonfire or like right before it. There's this little stairway and they would just stand there and try to and just kind of be in everyone's way. It's pretty funny. Now we'll see what happens. You touch random glowing circles. One-way ticket to Spire Town. Oh, yeah. But, like, they're nice enough. They sit there, and if you, you know, quote-unquote, talk to them, they'll bring you back. Little Lan Orlando. These guys are big and intimidating. They don't actually do anything to you right away unless you attack them. And there are some items and chests behind them. And they will attack if you go after those. So after all these that fight and you have all these souls, I'd recommend not doing that until you come down here to the bonfire. And there's more over there. A nice rest. Go ahead and go back to our Claymore, which we go. Plus nine, plus ten. Oh yeah, in Portland they got glowing rings. Just touch them and things show up and get you where you need to go. Or even where you weren't sure you needed to go. But you're going there anyway. <laughs> yeah, you take you to some city block full of spires and you just hope it's not all controlled by the whatever that group was that took over. I don't think that was Portland, but was it Seattle where all those that militant group just took over part of the city? Well, you are a rare visitor. Welcome to the lost city of Anor Londo, chosen undead. If you seek Lord Grin's old keep, exit here and head straight yonder. Head straight if you yonder. Are the chosen one, a revelation shall visit thee. What follows thereafter depends upon you. Hmm. What is it? What am I? Well, I am the keeper of the bonfire. 
If not for me, what beacon would there be in this lost city? A gatekeeper and a guide. That is my calling. The bonfires attended by the keepers are special. They are linked to one another, and their flames never die. Yet never shall the keepers of these flames meet. If you require rest, now is the time. That is, after all, what the bonfire is for. If you require rest, that is... Yeah, I'd say this is like the first, like, fire keeper that you actually get to talk to, so... You actually get to learn a little bit about the bonfires. I don't think I caught any more. Yeah. Yes, I think we'll take a rest. Not that they'd probably need it, but we'll repair. Spend some souls, we'll level up. Four levels. Keep that with vitality and endurance. And you know, we'll keep the power within. We'll try that out again later here. You know what? No reason not to just use a bunch of this stuff. Because I'm pretty sure we've got lots. Oh yeah, we got a ton of them. Yeah, about twice as many as we had when we got here. Or double the amount that we had. The same amount as we had when we got here. Just double the amount we had. Three more levels out of it. Just cap off endurance. Up to 30. But yeah, we can carry a lot of stuff now. Maybe someday we can actually go back to, uh, under 25 percent that would be kind of cool but i think that's going to be it for today we may have to enter wando so we'll be ready to take on that and hopefully orange and smo next time sure we'll get there see how uh actually do you know we'll open up or get to the point where we go to the painted world as well although i probably won't go there yet because we have the doll and we'll get the painting that it goes with. So yeah, that uh, it was good. We got through Swamp. We went back to the Undead Asylum. Went through most of it. We'll have to go back and get the boss later. And yeah, moved on to... We got the Quaylog. Ring the bell. Opened up Sin's Fortress. Got through there. And here we are. So, yeah, next time we'll see about getting the Lord Vessel. And then we can move on with the story and get... The ability to warp around and open up all the late game areas and we'll see what's next and hopefully get myself a new fancy lighting weapon that'll be really good after I, we get rid of one soon's mo we'll, we'll start wrecking some stuff with that but yeah until next time thanks for watching and we'll see you next week